What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. In this video, we are going to be talking about TLT and TMF. A lot of you guys have been bugging me with so many questions on these two ETFs. No, I'm just kidding. But we are going to talk about whether it is finally time to invest in bonds. I'm going to go over some uh, you know, bullish and bearish catalysts that are important for TLT and TMF. And uh, and of course, you know the technical analysis and what I expect in the future and what I'm planning to do. So hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. There is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. And we'd love to have you on board as a MoneyVest member. Again, you get access to my entire intrinsic value spreadsheets, our members-only private videos. You get access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, my trading view charts. Um, and there's a lot of other benefits included as well. So links are going to be down below. There is a limited time and limited spots available. So if you want to access all of that, join us. So first things first, let's talk about how the bond yields basically move, right? Specifically TLT. Now TLT is a 20-year plus US Treasury bond, right? So most of the holdings within TLT are government bonds with long duration assets, right? These are, uh, you know, securities that are maturing in 10, 20, 30 years and pr preferably over 20 years, right? Because it's a 20 year treasury ETF. Now, the average um, bond maturity in TLT is 26 years, right? That, that goes to show you that it's definitely investing in long end of the curve and it's investing in bonds and, and treasuries that are maturing in a over 20 year plus time, time horizon. Now, the reason why the bond market has been underperforming is because it's inverse, which is the yields, they've been pushing higher, right? So there's an inverse correlation between the yields itself and the bond prices, right? Just like there's an inverse correlation with the price of the stock and the dividend yield, right? If the price of the stock goes down, the dividend yield goes up. It's the same thing, right? As the price of the stock goes down, the yield goes up. And that's exactly what we're witnessing in the bond market as bond prices continue to drop. So the market value of these bonds is coming down. The yields are going higher and vice versa, right? And of course, a lot of this move has happened on the back of yields going higher and bond prices continue to sell off because TLT and TMF, again, are inversely correlated to their respective yields. And in this case, we're talking about the 20 year because as I said, TLT is over 20 plus years uh, of bonds. Now, uh, Jerome Powell yesterday talked about this very same thing, right? During the FOMC, he was asked point blank, you know, why why, why do you think the yields are going higher? Uh, he specifically mentioned two reasons, uh, and he mentioned there's you know different several different models that can precisely tell you why the yields are pushing higher. But he basically mentioned two reasons. Number one, uh, stronger expected growth in the economy. So it's possible that investors are expecting a much stronger uh, growth in the GDP. Number two, because of the supply of all the treasuries in the market, right? And this is something that I have talked about in my previous videos. I've mentioned this time and time again. That's the only reason I haven't bought TLT and TMF in the last six months, eight months. I haven't dollar cost average. I haven't bought because... I understand that there is a lot of issuance from both a fiscal standpoint and a corporate standpoint. What do I mean? I basically mean the government right now, they are spending a lot of money, they're running all these deficits, and the only way they can come up with capital is to issue new bonds, issue new debt, right? So that they can replace old debt. And when there is new new debt issued, new bonds are being issued, who's going to be a buyer, right? Who's going to actually buy those bonds, right? If there's not a lot of demand for these bonds that are being issued by the US government, well, guess what? There is a supply demand imbalance. There's more supply of bonds hitting the market and the demand is not really that strong. And as a result, we know economics 101, as supply is more, demand is lower. We get prices selling off and yields continue to push higher. That's number one. Number two is if we continue to see the GDP come in stronger than expected, right? That also results in the yields going higher. And right now we have seen the economy to be very, very strong. We have seen, you know, uh, economic growth is coming in strong. Federal Reserve in their SCP even pointed to a 2.1% growth in this year and 1.5% next year. And both of these numbers were upgraded from their June estimate. And not to mention unemployment is very, very strong, right? So the moment, so there's two, re two things that need to happen in order for rates to drop right? There needs to be some type of deflation risk, right? 
deflation, meaning inflation is actually coming down. So we can expect the Federal Reserve to start cutting rates or there needs to be um, there needs to be a recessionary risk. Right. Unemployment starts to break down and we see a recessionary risk. And of course, economic growth slows down. There is a third reason, which is fiscal surplus. But I really doubt that's going to ever happen in the U.S. I'm going to completely ignore that. That's less than one percent probability that we actually see a fiscal surplus in the U.S. And as a result, the U.S. government is not issuing any more debt, which I just don't, I can't wrap my head around it because it's probably never going to happen. So there's only two reasons, right? Why there is going to be bullish catalyst for TLT and TMF. Number one, we start to see inflation roll over. So there is disinflation or straight up deflation. That's going to be very, very bullish catalyst for bonds. And the second thing is going to be if there's a recessionary environment where unemployment starts to break down because we know what the Federal Reserve does during that time. Um, they will start cutting rates, right? They will start cutting far more aggressively. And that's going to support, um, of course, the yields rolling over. And then bond prices, as I mentioned, they move inversely to price, start pushing higher as well. Now, there is a game of patience here, okay? And I want to mention that this is not a swing trade. This is not a technical trade. This is not a investment long term. This is what, what this is, TLT, TMF, is a macro driven tactical play. That's what it is, okay? This is not a technical swing trade because you're trading at a support and it's pushing higher. No, it's also not a long-term investment because bonds, in my opinion, long-term are a losing trade against equities, right? So I would much rather personally be invested more in equities as compared to bonds. Of course, it depends very much on your risk tolerance and your time horizon and your liquidity needs. Of course, if you are much older, you're going to be a little bit more risk averse than you know investing in bonds as opposed to equities. But for me, bonds long-term have always underperformed equities. So I'm not going to be invested in them long term. This is only a macro tactical play with the expectation that in 2024, we're going to see rates come down. Although Federal Reserve has already, you know, shot down the possibility of four cuts, they've come down to two cuts now. But things are obviously subject to change depending on how we see inflation over the next couple quarters. Now this right here is the returns of TLTs. So one year negative 12%, three year negative 43% compared to the S&P 500. It's definitely underperformed significantly. And Ray Dalio also mentioned that right now, temporarily, right? Temporarily right now, cash, I think is good. And I don't want to own debt or bonds and those kinds of things. He specifically mentioned that. And I do agree right now. I think there is possibility that rates continue to move up as inflation continues to be a little bit of a persistent problem with energy prices going higher and the economy continues to be strong. Unless I mention those two things, if I don't see signals or indicators for those two things, there is no rush for me to be dollar cost averaging into TLT or TMF. Okay. Yes, they're trading down. Yes, they're selling off. So if you come over to TLT right now, uh, it's just been selling off. It's literally down to its level from back in October of 22. Pre market, it's down under 1.2%, a little bit under $92. But guys, you have to understand there's no rush in this because it's a macro tactical play. It takes time to develop. Right. It's not something that you buy today. And of course, it's going to rally, you know, next week to, you know, 20 percent or 30 percent. No, these things take time to develop. And that's why I've been so patient. But it's possible that the results going to be pretty good. And right now we still have the 10 year yield pushing up to a new high of 4.44 percent, so up 77 basis points. So it's going to re require a lot of patience and discipline and understanding of the fact that there are macro things that we are watching. And until those things play out, there is no signal. There's no indication that yields are going to roll over. They are hitting a new high right now. As I'm doing this video, they're coming up to its same level from back in, let's see if you go back from back in 2007, October of 2007. Uh, and we know what the Federal Reserve did back then when we actually started to see signals of recession, right? When the economic bubble, the housing bubble started to burst, in 2007, we know what the Federal Reserve did. They cut back on interest rates almost immediately. A lot of quantitative easing began. And as a result, the 10 year yield, you can see, pretty much collapsed back in October 2007, dropped a little bit over 55% to 1.3, 1.4%. And then, of course, eventually dropping even further to 1.2, 1.3%. So, bottom line is, Patience is the name of the game. I pointed out some of the reasons. The reason why uh, bonds are right now bearish because econo economic growth is very strong. Uh, we're seeing low levels of unemployment. We're seeing uh, you know fiscal deficits, so a lot of corporate and government issuance. But the bullish signal, the bullish reason, by the way, I've got my notes here. I'm just reading off of them. The bullish um, 
signals are going to be inflation turning into disinflation, eventually deflation. And if there is a recessionary type environment where unemployment starts to go up, and that's when the Federal Reserve can look to start cutting rates uh, in 24. So patience and discipline, really important. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And again, I, I will alert everybody in the Discord if I do end up, you know, dollar cost averaging a little bit more into TLT. Uh, but like I said, it's going to be mostly a macro driven tactical play. I'm not planning on holding long term and I'm also not planning on a very short swing trade. It's going to be mostly just a couple quarters that I'll be looking at it uh, from a macro perspective. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. So always happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.